welcome everyone this morning to um, day two of the Tees Valley Business Summit um, and welcome to this session um, where we're hoping to talk a little bit around um, introducing Tees Valley Business, um, the new £35 million business support service for Tees Valley and hopefully we can say a bit about that and and um, we'll have plenty of time for some, some questions and some discussion. Um, if we could bring the slide up please, Abby. Thanks. Um, so, th so that's today's session. If we just go on to the next slide. Thanks. So what we're hoping to cover in this session is is really sort of um, th three, th three key areas. Um, as I say, I'll, I'll spend some time um, talking a little bit about Tees Valley Business and what we've been doing over, over the last um, six to nine months in, in um, introducing our new uh, business gateway service for, for SMEs, businesses uh, across the Tees Valley. Um, then, then I thought it'd be really useful when we support and, and, and support for growth um, to, to, to businesses across the Tees Valley. Um, we probably couldn't discuss that without having some conversation about, about recent months and the, the, the combined authority support for business arising from the, the, the COVID um, situation and, and impact that's having. So Geraldine Brown from the, the combined authority will, will, will talk a little around that. Um, and then, then if, if that wasn't enough going on, we've obviously got the EU exit as well um, coming up um, imminently. Um, and we're looking at um, what we can do to support businesses um, during, during that transition process. And we've got Tracy Watson, who's doing some work with us at the, uh, at the uh, Combined Authority from the Funding Forum, who's going to talk a little around, around um, EU transition and, and, and the, the, the support we're looking to, to put in place for that. Um, so, so that's basically what we're hoping to cover this morning. Um, and you know, as I say, we, we'll, we'll have time for, for, for some questions and discussion um, to, towards, towards the, the end of the session. Um, but please, I think you can submit uh, questions um, on here as we go along. But please do that, and we'll, we'll either pick them up um, later on or, or, or try to accommodate them as, as we go through. So the next slide, please, uh, Abby. Thanks. So, so Tees Valley Business, a, a, a bit of context to that for, for, for people who, 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 who do know and, and are familiar with sort of previous arrangements. Um, essentially, the, the combined authority, we undertook a review of, of um, our growth hub activity um, and our, our, our business support activity um, to, to SMEs um, in terms of, of, of the business gateway functions that, that we had within the combined authority um, last year. Um, and, and as part of that review, we looked at some of the existing arrangements where um, we had a, a business compass service uh, which some of you may, may be familiar with and, and remember. Um, that was provided by um, UMI, previously BE Group, um, with, with, with a number of advisors um, um, directly sort of um, employed by UMI um, and, and managing our ERDF uh, business grant programs. Um, as, as, as part of the review um, last year, looking at how, how we wanted to go forward as a, as a combined authority in terms of the whole area of business support. I mean, fundamentally, um, support to businesses and support and business growth um, um, was, is, 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 is very high in terms of the priorities for the combined authority in terms of its, its, its economic ambitions. Um, so th there was a real, a real sort of... Um, emphasis on wanting to, to make sure we, we, we provide in you know the, the best we can in, in, in that area um, so so subsequently what was decided towards the end of last year along with the, the approval of a what was essentially a, a 35 million pound of additional funding from the combined authority investment plan um, into business growth um, it was decided that um, we would we would um, invest in 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 um, greater capacity um, in, in terms of what we call the, the business gateway service. Um, the business gateway service is, is intended to be um, 
and and there's you know a, a single point of contact for businesses to 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 come and talk to us um and 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 where we can work with them and and help to get the range of support clearly there's a there's a there's a plethora of support and, and a whole range and depth of support some of it within the combined authority some of it fund funding that that we as as Tees valley business um have directly some of it external funding some of it external support so the whole um role of that um information um working with businesses on diagnostics in terms of their needs and and the whole um um referral and 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 helping helping businesses get to the right place and the right support and the, and the right advice is the key function of, of, of the business gateway um so 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 that's 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 our, our premise for that in in terms of progress on that we we now have a um a significant team in place the the, the, the final pieces of the jigsaw on the team were in place the first of july when we had some a, a number of, of of advisors and 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 and, and managers moving across from UMI and have actually joined the combined authority. Some of them you you, you may be familiar with. Uh, Shaq has, has, has joined us as, as the um, our our um, business growth advisor manager, um, and the, the growth advisors include um, James Clancy um, and, and Andy Fay and, and Zara Ford. Um, and we've also um, created a post for for um, a, a junior growth advisor that we're, we're developing into the role, um, which, which Amir, Amir Khan, who was with the Combined Authority, has is, is, is taken up. We've also introduced um, new roles, um, particularly we've got um, um, a, a new, if you like, Nature. Who, who, we've established the whole, you know, single point of access with the CRM and and, and everything that goes with that. Um, um, with um, apologies, we get there. So K, K Lake has, has joined as 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 a as a, as a, as a coordinator, and we've actually also just just a guy called James Latcham has a has a banking background has, has joined us. So his his specific particular uh, role is an, an experience is is around helping businesses access the right type of finance that they need for, 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 their, for, for their growth plans and, and, and investment. Um, so, so there's quite a team being put in place and we, we continue to, 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 to build that team. Um, we're doing a whole piece of work around, around um, developing our digital offer in terms of information and, 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 and making access to information and, and if you like self referrals so businesses can and people can access what they need to see in, in, in an easy digestible way through through our, our, our website and our, our social media um, and and we are we, we obviously you know key key to the function as well is actually having our our, our business advisors first who can do face-to-face -face work um, with businesses and 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 you know as I say, help them, um, advise them, get get them to the the, the right support, um, help them help them through some of that process um, where it's needed. So so overall, um, that that's that's sort of a summary of the the, the Tees Valley business, if you like. Tees Valley business is is the business gateway um, service for for Tees Valley for SMEs across Tees Valley, of which we've got seventeen thousand. Um, it's also the the um, um, there are there are um, business growth hubs. It's it's our growth hub. It's the Tees Valley Growth Hub as well. So you could you know I guess describe that interchangeably. Um, Tees Valley Growth Hub, Tees Valley Business Gateway, um, with Tees Valley Business being the, the 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 brand brand for that. In terms of the investment that 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 was that, that was approved by 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 the Combined Authority um, last October, things are going really well on that. It, it, in, in essence, the the investment sort of breaks down into into that thirty five million investment breaks down into sort of four different areas. Um, the first one is is actually you know to fund over the over the next ten years the the business gateway service to you know to provide that if you like one stop shop uh, for businesses. The the second area of, of that investment fund is is a twenty million fund actually for. Um, larger capital grants and working capital investment um, um typically over fifty thousand. i think up to around two million pounds is is the potential on that 
Um, but that's that's for significant um, investment in, in 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 business growth. Um, that's a, that's a second area. The, the third area is 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 largely is about eleven million pounds for. So there's some various programs in that, but the big bulk of that is is European funding money ends in 2022. So the bulk of that 11 million sort of kicks in in the in 2020 20, 20 23 24 um, to essentially replace the loss of that eu funding monies to enable us to continue to do some key programs that are done currently under under esif programs um and the fa the final area of, the final area of investment within that 35 million is some monies have been set aside to specifically target inward investment and inward investment marketing and and um, the targeting of that to, towards specific sectors and and specific uh, type, types of organisation to um, attract them to Tees Valley as a, as, a, as a great place to 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 establish and, and, and invest and and base 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 business. So so that's that's essentially um, in 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 a really quick canter through a, a summary of, of of what we've been doing and and where we are in addition to that um outside of that 35 million business um support investment we also uh, have have recently as of july um gone launch launched a new business uh, growth grant program um that's an ERDF funded program um it it allows for up to, up, up to fifty thousand pound of, of, of grant um, investment. Um, it is a it's a three year program. It's 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 a thirteen million investment program overall. And what has been really really helpful on that is the the uh, intervention. The out in far more attractive. Um, offered to businesses, particularly in the in the current climate, um, we're also about to um, launch um, uh, an, an energy efficiency grant program um, that will be coming on stream in in, in in the coming two or three months. That will provide small grants essentially for for green green energy um, investment for for SMEs. Um, and we, we're also about to look, we're out to um, procurement for a, for, for a delivery partner or delivery partners at the moment, but um, we will also be launching uh, very soon uh, a peer peer to peer network program, which is directly aimed at, at allowing businesses to come together with some facility um, arrangements for for action learning. Um, and, and for, for cohorts with with you know um the 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 ability to bring in um professional advice expert advice and that's specifically geared up around in in, in on, on in response to sort of covid um it's a it's it's a base um program that has been rolled out um locally but it's 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 it's, it's, it's um it's something that has been rolled out across across the country so the peer to peer network program um is, is coming on stream very soon um and we have we have a whole range of other things that we we help businesses access and support and and actually provide um in, including apologies um yeah i mean there's been a number of programs we've introduced and, fund, and grant funding specifically in response to uh, the COVID impact. But I'll, I'll leave Geraldine to say a bit more about those. But we, in addition to the Peer Networks Programme and, and the Tees Valley Growth Fund um, that we talked about in the, in the new ERDF fund, um, we've obviously, you know, we've got a, a Tees Valley Catalyst Fund, which is various other investment funds that we work with and, and, and help support and, and, and fund. Uh, Tees Valley Catalyst Fund, uh, short-term loans to businesses, Northern NPIF Fund, um, British Enterprise Fund. Um, we have a small business leadership program. Um, we've got Kickstart Tees Valley, um, which again is 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 um, a, a COVID response program. Um, apprenticeship support, skill support. We're about to also launch a. Um, sorry, I've lost my screen there. Um, 
we're also about to launch a a um a skills program directly for for um smes um which is a significant investment program which will, will help help businesses with um skills planning um and and, and skills delivery uh, so we look forward to that so that's in 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 sort of 10 to 15 minutes that that's that's a, a, a real canter through just some of the points in terms of Tees Valley business who we are what we're doing uh, what we're aiming to do um, s s some of the investment capacities we have we have um, to hand and and some of the organizations we work with I would welcome it's on the screen there but um, any businesses who want to talk to us we have a, a, a single gateway point which you can access through a number of routes um, and I encourage you to look at teesvalleybusiness.com um, you can register your interest through there through a, an expression of interest and we will get back to you. Um, there's, a, there's a telephone line and there's, there's, there's an email there as well in, in, in terms of contacting us. So there's, there's a range of ways to contact us um, and set that process of dialogue, which is, is, is what we're here to do. Um, so, so thanks for that. I'll, I'll, if there's any questions, maybe we could, we could you know, we've, we've come to them um, after after Geraldine and, and Tracy have outlined um, some of the specifics around COVID impact and and EU transition thinking. Um, so at that point, I'll I'll hand over to Geraldine if I could, please. Thanks, Geraldine. Thanks, Martin. Hi, everyone. So I'm, my, my name is Geraldine Brown, and I'm the Strategy and Intelligence Manager at the Combined Authority. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing uh, to support businesses and residents in response to, to COVID and, and also in terms of planning for that recovery as well. Uh, so since since March of this year, we've we've been doing a lot of analysis to understand the impacts of this pandemic on our economy. Um, both in terms of those those macroeconomic impacts and how that's playing out at a at an international and national level and what that means for us in Tees Valley, but also working very closely with businesses and and other stakeholders to understand what it what it means for them, how they're experiencing it, and particularly what their needs for support are both in the immediate term and look into the future. Uh, clearly, that, that analysis is ongoing because we started this back in March and, and what we anticipate happening then, um, we, we now know more about. And this continues to be a, a, a live situation and, and we continue to monitor those impacts to ensure that the support that we're able to put in place in Tees Valley responds to that which our local companies need as far as possible and also our, our local residents but also so that we can utilize that to influence national policy as well and, and help to shape a national a national program that best supports Tees Valley. So just in terms of, sort of initial response and some of the activity that's taken place to date and, and building on some of what Martin said about the programs being delivered through Tees Valley Business. In the very early days, we, we acted as a point of contact for business and we continue to do that. So we continue to provide signposts to different supports that are available. Uh, and, and as that evolves as well, obviously, in terms of um, the, the national supports and announcements that we've seen come through from government, we continue to make sure that there's an up to date position on those um, and guidance as to how that affects businesses, particularly within Tees Valley. We've also set up a, a buy local Tees Valley sites, and this was really designed in the early days to help companies raise awareness and, and, and have a profile which let people know the, the goods and services that were available within Tees Valley, uh, particularly during that initial lockdown where a lot of companies we know had, had shifted to an online offer and were providing delivery services or, or alternative ways of accessing their goods and services. And again, that site continues to be live. Um, and, and will be for, for the future. Um, so I'd encourage if anybody's either not on there and they, they want their, their business to be represented on there, then please, we can make a link available um, in, in part of the chat and, and there's contact details on there. But equally, if there are goods and services that you're looking to access within Tees Valley, it's it's a resource there to, to help look at the local, local business uh, offering and how we can tap into that and use that to really support our local economy at this time and that's in turn you know the, there's, there's a raft of things on there covering a lot of different themes from sort of delivery services for for um, hospitality based uh, services and goods there's also the peer-to-peer -peer, 
Um, there's information about business and professional services that can be accessed on there as well. So I'd encourage you to take a look at that. In the early days, we also uh, supported local suppliers to connect with national requirements for PPE. Um, so we know in the early days, there was, uh, you know, it's well, well documented that there was difficulty in accessing PPE equipment. And there was a national call out from central government to identify local suppliers and manufacturers. And, and we, we work to identify through our contacts, through, uh, through the, the database of, of businesses that we've got in Tees Valley to identify those companies and make them aware of those national requirements to, to, pro pro to provide and manufacture PPE at a time of national need. Um, and and those, those companies have been connected with central government. As we understood more about the support needs at going through going through this crisis that businesses need, we've we've mobilised a series of funds and support programmes, some of which Martin's mentioned with regards to to peer to peer and securing additional resources to support the business growth fund. We also launched a welcome back fund, which was specifically for hospitality businesses um, who, who had to close as a result of COVID to reopen and to reopen safely to support them getting things in place to make sure that they could operate with effective social distancing, uh, the right safety, uh, the right safety equipment in place in terms of shields and sanitizers and things like that. Uh, we also had a back to business fund, one targeted specifically on the visitor economy, um, with that being a sector that we know was most severely hit by this, particularly in the in the early days and, and continues to be so. But also a wider cross sector uh, support fund, a back to business fund, which was really, again, about helping businesses to adapt their offer, support them to, to operate, to to welcome back customers and workers in a safe way and to access the equipment, the technology, advice and guidance that, that can enable them enable them to do that. So they're just some of the specific COVID response programmes and obviously they complement um, the, the services that Martin talked through in detail and, and those which are, which are shown on the Tees Valley business site. We also have schemes in place to support employment and skills. So we know that there's there's been a, a big a, a big hit, a lot of people on furlough, but we've also seen the redundancy numbers going up. And we want to try and do what we can to support particularly young people who've been disproportionately affected by this and some of who are entering the economy at, 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 at the, the worst possible time. We want to do ensure that we're doing what we can to create those opportunities create those employment opportunities for businesses to develop skills and for people to access employment. So there are apprenticeship grants that, have been, that are available to employers. We're also acting as an intermediary for the government's kickstart scheme. So that's, that's the scheme that enables companies to create work placements for young people. And the national scheme is available for those who can create placements for 30 plus um, people, but we we we've got a scheme in place to be an intermediary to support those companies who can offer a smaller number of placements, uh, and that's live at the moment. And again, details on our website. Other things that are happening, and and, and you've probably seen in the local press, uh, developments are progressing at the Teesworks site uh, with opportunities for local contracts and the and the development of a skills academy associated with that. There have also been transport interventions. So looking at how we can support accessibility and connectivity at this time in a way that's 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 COVID safe and, and that is enabling people to access places of work and learning um, and also to get out and about and enjoy Tees Valley in a way that's that's safe at the moment. So that's particularly focusing on on active travel or green travel. So you're walking and you're cycling routes. Um, also, we've expanded the, the Tees Flex, the on demand service there to complement the public transport network and the rollout of the e-scooter pilot. Can I have the next slide please? So these there's some of the some of the interventions that have put in, been put in place in the short term and, and I think you know as, as we all know this this the, the the impact of this crisis hit very uh, very severely across all parts of the economy. There's been no part of the economy untouched and they hit very quickly. So what we want to do is make sure that we're responsive to that, that we've put things in place that support businesses 
in the short term, but that we've also got an eye to planning for that longer term recovery. Look, so looking ahead to the future and make sure that we're, we're putting things in place and, and, and have an eye to what some of the, the challenges and, and in some cases opportunities can be for business. So in parallel to the supports which have been in place over the, over the last few months and will continue to be developed and evolved, we've been working on developing a, a recovery plan for the medium to longer term that builds upon those short term interventions. And, and that is based on, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of that analysis that, that we've done and that we continue to do to understand what the impact of this crisis is now, but also how it's likely to play out in the future and how we can make sure Tees Valley is best positioned to, to respond to that, to make sure that our businesses are supported through these difficult times, but are also in a position then to be able to, to come back stronger, to be able to, to grow when the economy does reopen and, and that businesses are supported, supported with that. Clearly, as, as, as a sort of plan, as, as a recovery plan, we haven't published a plan as such because it remains a live document because this is a, this is an ongoing situation and, and there are assumptions that are assumptions that we that we perhaps could have made back in March and April that, that we now know more about. And obviously, with uh, the prospect of local lockdowns and, and what we're seeing play out in other regions and at a national level, we need to make sure that we, we continue to understand what that means for our economy, what that means for our businesses, and that we're doing what we can at a local level to work with companies and also shaping that national support agenda as well. So with all that in mind, we have developed a series of interventions, a series of themes whereby we really want to focus our efforts to support both response and recovery. Um, and, and as I say, that they can, they can, it enables recovery, but it also builds resilience into our economy. It makes sure that we're building a, a strong and sustainable business base for the future, which, which the existing companies and new companies have got a real key role in our, our economy. And a lot, I'll go through the themes of the recovery plan. And I think at this stage, we just need to be mindful that a lot of this is a pitch to government. So this is this, this formed the basis of our submission to the, the comprehensive spending review. Um, which is underway at the moment, and we're expecting uh, the the output of that in November. Um, but this is the, the the themes that I'll talk through form the basis of our submission into that to really let government know what the needs are within our economy, what some of the opportunities could be in the economy, and how they can be supported by national investments. Can I have the next slide, please. So um, I'll just run through these quite quickly. So, um, so there are six key themes um, and, and then there's a series of interventions which sit behind these. Um, so the first theme is very much about building confidence, building confidence amongst people in Tees Valley and amongst businesses so that people can engage, people can go back to work, they can enjoy Tees Valley, places can open up in a way, a way which, which is safe. And, and people feel confident is safe given given the health risks that we've still got ongoing. But really getting people out and about, enjoying Tees Valley, supporting our local economy and supporting that economy to keep going and, and to make sure that it's able to, that it, it remains sustainable once we come out of this. We've also got a package of interventions designed very much to support people with education, skills and jobs. So I mentioned some of the schemes in place to support young people now. Uh, we're looking at how we can build upon those because we do know that young people have been disproportionately affected by this. There are, there are a lot of uh, lost opportunities for young people and we don't want young people to lose out as a result of that. So we want to make sure we're doing everything we can um, to, to develop their learning and their ability to access employment. Also supporting those people who've been made unemployed as a result of COVID. Um, we know that the, the longer people are out of work, the harder it is to get back into work. So we want to work with those people to, to make sure that they are they're able to access opportunities in areas or develop skills and learning to get them back into the labour market. We've got another theme specifically around agile companies, competitive workers. This wraps up a lot of what Martin was talking about and, and the evolution of our business support program um, to look at how we can really support our firms to be competitive and, and able to adapt and pivot to some of those changing economic conditions um, and, and make sure that we've got really strong, viable companies in a, in a post-COVID world. 
Starting these next three themes start to look a little bit more to the future. So these are about looking at how we can put the building blocks in place for growth now. So how can we make sure that we're developing the physical infrastructure through transport developments, as well as digital infrastructure, given that we know the, uh, the rapid digitalization that we've seen of the economy, making sure that we've got those things in place for a really thriving, successful economy in the future, but creating construction opportunities now as well. So it's maintaining um, our economic base, creating jobs, creating business opportunities now in a way that's setting out the stall for future growth and opportunity. We've got a theme specifically around health for growth, given that the, the, you know, this, this pandemic is inherently people focused and obviously the, um, the needs to meet skills within the health and social care sector to meet some of those PPE uh, requirements, some of those um, sort of what could potentially be reshoring opportunities for manufacture of PPE and, and other equipment to service our health and social care sector and looking at how we can help to build that base to meet domestic demand within our local economy. And then the final thing, what we've called bringing business home. And this one's this is really about having an eye to our longer term ambitions to growth, which which remain those which you're probably familiar with in terms of, you know, really setting out Tees Valley as an exemplar region in green technologies, low carbon, hydrogen, making sure we keep an eye to that, but recognize, you know, we, we still want to get there. Our, the way that we get there is going to need to change in light of the, the effects of this crisis, but making sure that we don't lose sight of that ambition. And we think about proportionately and realistically, what do we have to do to make sure that we do still chart that path to growth? Um, and, and that helps us to deliver a strong economy in the future. I'll pause there um so that that's it sort of in a nutshell and i appreciate i've gone through that very very quickly but if anybody wants to pick up with me afterwards i'm, I'm happy to have a chat about some of the detail hi um i'm tracy watson and i'm here today to talk to you about well i'm not going to use the dreaded brexit word as we've already left it's the eu exit however we are quickly approaching the end of the eu transition period with only 11 weeks to go until changes are imposed so please don't make the mistake of thinking this only affects you if you import or export goods changes could affect anyone I'm going to start off with a bit of an update about where, where we are today, what changes we already know about, and then we'll give you some information about the support programme um, Tees Valley Business have pulled together to help Tees Valley Business through the end of the transition and beyond. So next slide, please. So we left the EU on the 31st of January 2020, and contrary what, to what some people believe, there is no going back. Um, we have left and changes will happen from the 1st of January 21. So businesses do need to prepare. Some of those changes are already clear. However, a lot still depends on whether the UK manages to agree a trade deal. And I should mention that since pre preparing these slides a couple of days ago, um, there has been some changes, so I will tell you. But the key date for this is was actually today. Boris Johnson had declared that if a deal wasn't agreed by the 15th of October, then we will be moving on and conclude preparations for a no deal. Um, he, he did announce yesterday that he's not going to make the decision now until the end of the e European talks tomorrow. So that's the 16th. But either way, we will know one way or another exactly what we need to prepare for within the next few days. Either way, businesses will need to prepare. Next slide, please. So what do we already know? We know that from the 1st of January 2021, we will no longer be a part of the customs union, the single market or the EU VAT regime. This is going to affect importers and exporters, service businesses, financial services, professional qualification recognitions, trademarks, contracts with non-EU countries, if you've contracted as a member state, data transfer to and from the EU. And for everyone else, don't forget the potential impact on your supply chain. You need to check with your suppliers to find out if they are fully prepared so it doesn't impact on your business. The process for importing and exporting goods will change. If you're importing or exporting, you must have an EORI number. That's an economic operator registration identification number starting with GB. There'll be new customs documentation process and systems effective from the 1st of January. They're actually expecting about two and a half million more 
customs transactions to take place, which will impose quite a burden on the freight forward and customs brokerage industry. So to avoid delays at the ports, it's absolutely essential you've got the right commodity codes and documentation for any consignments being transported. This gives rise to an opportunity. Um, there's a lot more customs brokers will be needed. To address this, the government have extended their customs grant scheme. We can provide more details on that. It, it, it provides funding for training systems, contributes to the cost of employing someone, so you can complete the documentation yourself or offer this service as an agent for somebody else. I've put the website on there where you can apply directly online, but please, uh, you can find out more details on the gov.uk website or get in touch with us and we'll talk to you a little bit more about that. Tariffs and quotas will be changing. For imports, uh, for imports, the changes are being phased in January, April and June. So if you do import anything, please check um, when it will affect you. For exporters, if we don't have a deal, then tariffs will apply from actually from 11 p.m. on the 31st of December. Um, but this will become more clear in the next few days. And of course, don't forget the special rules will relate to goods moving in, out and through Northern Ireland um, due to the Northern Ireland protocol. But again, the finer details are not published yet. There'll be new rules for traveling to the EU, to Switzerland, Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein. And that will affect hauliers, business travel, personal travellers. Um, uh, the impact will be in relation to passports, driving licence, travel insurance, medical cover. So you need to check the rules of, around that. You need to check if you live or work in the EU. You'll also need to consider um, the rules in that individual state. Now, I've just noticed we're running quickly out of time, so I'm going to skip through and make sure that you're aware of the support that uh, is going to be offered. Um, if we go to the next slide, yeah, please. Yeah. So a bit about the programme of support Tees Valley Business pulling together, which will be accessed through the Growth Hub um, to help Tees Valley businesses through the transition period and beyond. There'll be a telephone support helpline dedicated to respond to questions about the EU exit changes. There'll be uh, businesses who need more intensive help can be referred for one-to-one -one support from our EU exit advisors to help with a specific concern, help source specialist advice, information, training, training sessions and events will be, will be held as well. And there will be a dedicated website on the Tees Valley Business Growth Hub that will have frequently asked questions, information about all the support available regionally and nationally, including what training and what funding is available, facility to book an appointment with an EU exit advisor for a health check on your business, look at the risks, what you need to do or help you identify new opportunities, links to other resources, and there'll be bite-sized videos and blogs relevant to a specific type of business or a specific rule or an issue. We understand most people don't have the time to wade through reams of documents. So the idea is to provide clear, concise information so you can easily jump straight to the detail that's just relevant to you. And Tees Valley Business plan to make the support available right through to February 2022. The next slide will give you a summary of what I've just talked about, but what I'm going to do, I won't run through that because we're pretty much running out of time. Um, so I will hand you back to, uh, what I will say is, please keep an eye on the teasvalleybusiness.com website for the launch of this program very soon. In the meantime, all the full details of all the rules and what you need to do to prepare can be found on gov.uk forward slash transition website. But please get in touch with us and we'll respond to any questions that you have. Thank you for listening. Back to Martin. Thanks, Tracy. Um, fantastic. Um, uh, Abby, I don't know if we've got any questions coming through that, that, Hi, that we could quickly you answer know, in the short period. We've, we've got, got quite a few, actually, but I think we're probably going to have to cover most of them off um, afterwards. Um, but I'll, I'll just give you a couple now. Um, Carla said, hi, Martin, 30 million of support via the Business Growth Grant Programme is obviously great news for the Tees Valley SMEs. Could you talk through some of the types of growth activities that the programme may be able to support? Very quickly, my clock is counting down at 14 yeah. seconds at the moment, but... Carl, Carl, thanks for the question. It's, it's, it's a really important question. I, I think to, to answer that very quickly at the moment in the time we've got available is is, is in summary, the, the, the that business growth program supports hundreds in many, many different sectors, in many, many different scenarios. It can fund, for example, professional services to actually develop a business plan for, for seeking to secure funding. 
Um, it, can, in, it can capital investment, um, productivity investment, jobs growth investment. There's a whole range of things that scenarios that can cover in many, many, you know, in manufacturing, in digital, in service industry. There's a there's a whole range of things, and and um, you know, I think I think where we're trying to get to is is actually it's what it's it's a good example as well, whereby I think. Um, our plans are to have, have have better information and access to information and sharing some of that to our to, to our media channels to get it out there in terms of all the different scenarios it, it, it can be uh, it, it applied to there's, there's there is because it's the idf funding there's a limited number of very specific sectors including agriculture and, and fisheries um as an example where where this fund can't can't be used but in the broad general sense of, of of most businesses, um, it, it, it can be applied.